recorded January 17th, 2024. Good afternoon, Andrea. Good afternoon, Roderick. How are you? It is an afternoon, isn't it? Um, if you're from the south, according to who you talk to, five o'clock is evening, just like you have supper. You're not having dinner, you're having supper. So um that's a funny time. I, I think it's evening because people started drinking earlier and earlier. Cause I remember happy hour we were six and then it's five and four, and next year happy hour will be at three o'clock. The way we're going around here. But um good to see all of you. Andrew, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I was just had a uh just had a team meeting where we were talking about getting certified for uh co-pilot for security. Uh, and I know certification, I think, is one of the things we're going to talk about today. So that was a nice uh, synergy there. But otherwise, I'm okay. It's, it's yeah, it's it's that what what you just did. It's <laughs> I, I oh God. you know, I, I don't fall into the whole January's renewal thing. My 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 wife does it. To me, the first two years of February, it always been for ten years more than that. Allows all that stuff in your ear about I'm going to turn over a new leaf. What was wrong with the old leaf, right? And all this other stuff. So, but I, I noticed your, uh, <laughs> I noticed your handle halfway through dry January. <laughs> How's that working out? Well, I will say, considering my dry January really did not start till I got back from my trip, which was only a few days ago. I'm really a few days into dry January because I figured Paris didn't count. I mean, you got to have a glass of wine in Paris, but. Uh, but I'm already, you know, Bean. I will say the two things when I'm feeling frustrated, I want to do or have a drink or eat sugar. So I've already been tempted to do both of those things. Drink. Yes. You sort of know me sugar. You know, if you and I were traveling for business, you always talk me into eating the most sugariest thing in the world. Well, the ice creams are this big or, <laughs> or help me drink $40 flutes of, champagne that i'm drinking like gatorade and you're like yo you know so um i don't do drink uh dry january uh i'm a person that believes in you know cold turkey evolutions are bad for you so i'm sort of doing a damp january damn. i'm damp <laughs> i'm damp and i'm i'm just i'm i'm cutting back right because nothing tastes good that's where you me. that's where you kind of soak your clothes in alcohol right and just no, you just want to pour it in your hand. Yeah. You know, you get to smell it. Even my wife's surprised. She's like, Do you haven't bought any beer or anything? I said, Once it's exhausted in the refrigerator, I'm at that point where it doesn't taste good. And if it does taste good, I'm not going to. I got beer now, though, because I'm, I'm this is my favorite beer. And once that's gone, I don't have any more. But anyway, enough about us. Rod, what's up? Us. With, with so, the, speaking the, of dry the January, dead, I, the I thought every. Are you like that? My favorite people call me G-Pop. That's my grandpa name. Um, <clears throat> speaking of which, anytime I travel, I don't know who knows this, but if you go into one of those little news shops, you know, where they literally have everything, they've recently started putting little tubs of Hot Wheels. So I've been picking up like four or five Hot Wheels every trip just to bring home to the grand boy, and he just loves it. He's like, God, oh, G-Pop brought me some. But I will tell you that in the San Francisco airport, they had zero Hot Wheels. I don't know what's up with those people. Probably a dollar Hot Wheel would have been like $50 in San Francisco. I don't know. Maybe that's why people don't buy probably, there. Probably because those people are not putting Hot Wheels, candy, and toys in an unmarked van and trolling the streets. Yeah, they might. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Hot yeah. Wheels. Um, you know, airport junk collectors. But speaking of dry January... I thought every January is dry because I live in Ohio and it's so cold and the atmosphere in the house is so dry. I mean, my skin is just my gross. Skin is, it's my yeah. skin is dying too, man. I got the humidifier going and everything. Um, yeah. So uh, to our listeners, you know, I know this sounds like the, the, the useless banter that we started to start off with. I don't think we'll ever change, but uh, we had guests. Unfortunately, the guests, uh, fell victim to, you know, unscheduled priorities and they apologized profusely and they're going to come back. We could have got one, but I think the, the guest that we have requires 
both of them to be here at the same time. It's sort of like, you know, can't have Batman without Robin or, you know, stuff like that. But well, it was like one of the uh, ventriloquist uh, acts, I think. So. Yeah, it doesn't come off well if you don't have the, the little dummy right there, right? You seem weird talking yeah. to yourself. I do it all the time, though. Um, yeah, this this has been a slow week for me. Um, you know, I, I, I go through phases where I, well, my new role doesn't allow me to really get super deep like I used to into touching the technologies, but um, I had some stuff going on. But when I did have free time between, we'll talk about the studying piece. Uh, I've been playing with, um, let me go back a little bit. I'm gonna, I've been playing with Adalom, and then I've been playing with Microsoft Cloud App Security. I'm playing with Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. So that's what gave you all the names, right? Uh, I was testing something out, and uh, someone asked me, and then I ran across some stuff that's pretty cool. Uh, I did not know, and it sort of lead into what you and Andrew are going to talk about. It seems like it's it's the thing. The shiny thing is bringing everything into it. I, I, AI and 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 it's 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 the technology black hole. It's sucking everything into it. Once you get past, once you cross the event horizon, you cannot get out of it. You suck into it, right? And, and but I get it now. You know, I and I I, I think I was a, crunch, a a contrarian just because I would always like saying, well, that's not going to be a thing with Copilot. It's not going to be a thing with AI. It's not going to do anything. I give up. It's right. It's it's a thing. It really is a thing. Yeah, <clears throat> I think more and more. I think. It, even myself initially, I'm like, eh, what can this thing do? But the more you get into it and the more you see the results, I was in a discussion on LinkedIn earlier today. One individual said, Hey, I saw a security copilot demo recently, a live demo. They said live demo, which I know it wasn't, but um, live demo. And uh, it wasn't that impressive. Well, we control those demos. We control what, you know, people can see and what, capabilities are available mm -hmm. before GA. So um, I will tell you that there's some significant capability here, particularly from, and we I talk about this. So I, last time I saw y'all was on the Wi-Fi for the plane as I was traveling to San Francisco, tried to get on. And of course, you know, how plane Wi-Fi is, but um I talked about it at San Francisco last week. I'll be talking about it in New York next week. How Security Copilot, from a developer standpoint, is kind of like the best of breed that we're developing at Microsoft right now. Because we have, at least I think initially, 150 or more co-pilots at Microsoft, something like that, which is... Are you embellishing? Uh, I don't think I'm embellishing. It's super annoying. because, But the thing is... This thing caught on so quickly, every team wanted to create their own. And so the code oh, doesn't even okay. doesn't even match, right? So um we, what we've been doing with Security Copilot is kind of creating a more uniform, extensible AI platform that literally anything can plug into, which we'll talk more about that yeah. sometime in March. It, or so, it, it, it seems as though and you and Andrew, the AI and copilot experts on, on the team, you know, Brody and I have admitted we need to catch up because our, our, our job's not so, copilot's not in century in our job. This is what you guys do, right? So we are, we're on the fringe of it, trying to consume it as best we can that touches our role. And, uh, but I've actually, I said, let me start from the basics. So, you know, Andrew, I think it's all the soft accuse me of not reading your, your, your newsletters few weeks back, but I'm not going to hold any shade. I went through and just sort of read them all, but I cheated. I took all of your newsletters and ran them and put them in a form. And then I ran and said, summarize for me what Russ talked about. And it, like, it actually said, you know, these articles seem to be redundant. <laughs> I said, wow. <laughs> wow. It's just rude, right? Uh, I do pay for the, the I do pay for the consumer version of chat GPT. I think it's 20 bucks a month, something like that. Um, and I went and just got a ebook and started going through it. And, and it's, it's actually useful for yeah. things. I also like to try to trick it to do certain things. And uh, I, I sort of found a consistent way to trick it is by giving it the answer, right? And, and, and giving an answer mean 
I say something or you ask a question, is this the correct thing? Is this the right answer to this? And it goes through and I, I'm not trying to break it. I'm just trying to see a couple of things. On how oh, you can you, you can ask it a question and say in the response, include this. And that will actually be part of I don't, it's a I don't know if it's tricking. It. I think it's just it's considering it. But did that and uh, the, the MDA stuff I want to talk about uh, and I'm shortening the, uh, the the acronym is really Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, but that's a mouthful and nobody wants to say MDCA. So it's MDA and, you know, it's interchangeable. Those mm -hmm. that know that. Uh, and I'll tell you how, but um, we're going to let Andrew kick the show off because she probably has the most pertinent stuff to talk. We're going to uh, talk about certification. Right. She's the most sober right now because it's Ms. She is the most sober right now. Yeah. Right. And, and sooner or later, <laughs> she's going to get tired of us. And uh, I see her hair starting to go up. She's like, will they be quiet? <laughs> I get it. And yeah, so uh, what was I saying? I just had oh, by the way, it. before you head that down that route, Noodle has something that he <laughs> needs to admit. He actually admitted today that, speaking of chat GPT, he discontinued his license for for OpenAI's chat GPT today because of Copilot Pro. Well, I, how much is Copilot Pro? It's the same thing, right? I, I I think I have it. I'm not sure. How do yeah, you get Copilot uh, Pro? This consumer, right? You can consume it. That's right? the consumer. Yeah, yeah. You have it already, but yeah. Okay. I, I outside of Microsoft, I I pay for it because I'm really bill conscious this year. Right? I got a little uh, um, Chat GPT is excellent for doing your budget. Oh my God! You can take it, and I, I got to be careful with it because I'm not sure how this information is consumed. But if you can point it towards stuff like a your 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 PDFs from your credit card statements and stuff like that, it can parse it. Yeah. So there's so many things on Reddit and YouTube are telling you how to do these things that make it useful for a consumer. It's actually pretty cool, and and I saw it in real estate. Um, but we, we can, I think we need to yeah, look. We'll make, we need to make an uh, episode purely about. How do consumers use a relevant version of regenerative AI, right? Because we can talk about it from a technology standpoint, but if it's not helping you do this, this, and that in your house, it's just it's just voodoo, right? But when I saw it create a budget spreadsheet based on some stuff that I told it to go look at, you know, credit card statements, it's like it, it can come in and you can sort of give it an idea. So my first thought was, Wow, these these financial analysts are gonna find themselves in trouble if they don't adopt this because you're not gonna outdo it. So you have to use it so you can scale instead of having to be a manager with five people, you now have the ability to scale to 25 people because you got this thing in the back for it. But I think we sort of talked about this about five episodes ago. But I'm gonna go back to something that Noodle said. What is Copilot Pro? I I'm gonna I'm gonna have a dove. I don't what is what I, I have no idea what that is. We just um, announced that. So it's Copilot Pro for individuals. We just started talking about that yesterday. Um, so that's what you have for your office apps, essentially. Oh, that's all the stuff that's showing up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You and I were talking. Oh, okay. Because you're right. It's, and it's like now. 20 bucks per person per month or something like that, which is cheaper than OpenAI's uh, ChatGPT Pro. Okay, then I don't have it. I, I will talk about offline noodle. Yeah, Thanks twenty dollars per person. So Mike said it's for personal and family subscribers. Twenty dollars per person per month. Um, well, and that's, this is consumer version. Yeah, something's happening because all of my personal computers with my login, I'm starting to see you know the sort of tattletale icon, and it's it's in all my apps now. And the only thing, the only app I haven't seen it manifest in is OneNote. Haven't seen that's OneNote. probably Copilot for M365, which is the thing that's in Word, Teams, Excel, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but today we said we were going to talk about three things. We're going to talk oh, about Rod's AI tour. So Rod, maybe you can give us some details, dates, cities, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Thought we would talk about Edward's fascination with two new Defender for Cloud Apps features. And then if we have time, maybe talk about the latest uh, Gartner report for endpoint protection. So, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. All right. 
Oh, they did come out. I saw the told Chat GBT to summarize it for me. <laughs> oh my God, I'm becoming lazy. Someone's got to come turn me over here in a minute. Uh, <laughs> oh God, tell us, start, tell us, Rod. When does the tour start? What kickoff? Oh today? yeah, that that silly tour thing. Uh, so I was in San Francisco next week. We already mentioned that just a little bit. Um, last week we had about 1500 people at Moscone center West. If you remember old Microsoft builds that were there, it was literally, it, it was like the ghosts of past build attendees. It was just exactly the same, except it had Microsoft AI tour signs and everything all over the place exactly the same had the exact same feel it was awesome i think we ended up having last week about 1500 people uh at moscone center for it's a free event right so you sign up you register if you're in the area i thought this was interesting um so i delivered two security sessions last week um the only security sessions um one on this the future of security of ai and then also um how to secure generative AI apps, or at least how we're doing it at Microsoft. There were people that had actually traveled from the East Coast, from places like Milwaukee, Houston, and things like this, to San Francisco to come to this free event. So it's a free event, no registration, get your badge, come in, do whatever you want. We supplied meals, um, we had an expo area, community area, and all, all that good kind of stuff. So it was a bona fide conference, super awesome. Like I said, about 1,500 people there from all over the place that and and both of my security sessions were filled up. And I thought that was to me, I was super appreciative that people come into a kind of a primarily developer centric conference. Are there also interested in the security piece? Because there were several people I talked to that were there as developers, but they brought their security people along with them. I guess they maybe looked at the agenda beforehand. I don't know. But it was only two security sessions, but they were great. Um, I talked about GitHub Advanced Security. I did demos of Security Copilot, which people were super interested in. Um, next week, I'll be in New York City to do the same thing. So next Thursday, which is, what is next Thursday's date? Uh, the 25th. Next Thursday, 25th, I'll be in New York City to do the same thing at Javits Center. I was... Super surprised, but we have 5,000 people registered for New York City. 5,000 wow. people registered for New York City. It's a free event. It's a free event. Free event. Come get food. Come sit in the front row and heckle me, and I'm okay with that, just as long as you come and listen to and talk about security for AI. Now, there's a bunch of upcoming additional dates. I was super scared initially because I was on – track they had me pegged to do the one in Bangalore, um, which was like a week later but <clears throat> somebody up actually stepped up to do that one so i don't have to do that but um i may actually we'll see how it works out there's uh march 13th is france march 19th is berlin but then the following week i'll actually be in denmark so for sure so i, I may do paris and berlin i'm not positive but i wouldn't mind doing that um, but I love talking about all things AI and all things security because it's a necessary, necessary evil, necessary discussion to have. Um, I'm super evil. Evil. Yeah. When is, when is evil ever necessary? And I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying when, so I know when to do it. Um, yeah, I I was going to try to accompany you up to uh, New York next week. Uh, sitting in and, and, and too much going on. I just, it would burn me out trying to bounce between so and so and so and so. But yeah, 5,000 people, even for a free event. 5,000 people. And, and and it's exact same agenda, exact same schedule. So my guess is these rooms are going to be massive. Um, another cool thing about next week, which I thought was super awesome, a um, couple good buddies of mine, uh, Mark Rosinovich and Corey Sanders will be there, but also. Satya is given the keynote. Wow. Really? Yeah. Look at that. Satya is going so if you miss it. that, oh my goodness, this is the best. This is the best one. Oh, All the other goodness. ones are just pale in comparison. So. Okay. Okay. Well, that sounds like a thing. Um, what was the other thing you want to talk about? We'll, we'll flip over. Andrew, you're next or you want me to go to next? Andrea? 
I'm sorry, say it again. Oh, I'm, I'm whispering. You next or you want me to go next? No, I mean, why don't you go ahead and talk about your, I think you're more excited about it. I just thought it was something we probably ought to talk about, but you seem excited about talking about yours. <laughs> I, I am because, you know, for those who listen to the show for any significant amount of time, I am a huge fan of uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, previously known as Microsoft Cloud App Security, previously known as the company that Microsoft acquired at all. So it is a CASB. Uh, the C can be interchangeable. I've heard it called from, you know, client access security broker or cloud app security broker or whatever it may be. It, it, it is a tool or technology that looks at the way users interact with applications and in some form or fashion, how that data is interacting with the identity that is using the application. So think of something that you can put based on the identity that can look at what application is primarily SaaS, uh, but there are some, there are some traditional, um, What's it like? for lack of a better word, fat applications, right? They're not maybe based in the cloud. They're installed on these things, but they may talk to a cloud back end, so you can you mm -hmm. can sort of expect it. If it has an API, then and then uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps can probably see it. So I was going through this. Someone asked me about some data governance stuff, and I said, "Well, I'm not super strong on that." I'm, I went into it, but one thing that I noticed, and so now I'm sort of disappointed because I read it from a uh, a a uh, a LinkedIn post for a guy named Marco Loren. We're trying to get him on the show. Marco, if you listen, I sent you a LinkedIn request. We got to get you on the show this year. His screenshots don't match up to my portal, and I can't see it. But what it is, uh, and I was going to share my screen, is that now, if, you, if you're familiar with the way Cloud App Security works, you install it. It's an E5 uh, SKU from Microsoft, part of the security workload. I believe it's, it is part of the threat side of the E5 security SKU, SKU being the license. And what it does once you install it is tenant aware. So it looks at what your uh, verified identities that are logging in into intra ID are doing within that subscription slash tenant. Think that someone logs in on a computer or a mobile device and they go to LinkedIn or Tinder or whatever, Google. You can see that activity. Now, you can't really in, intercept that activity and decode it of a sort, but you can actually see trends and things along that line. Its strength is it can look at certain activities that may be precursors to ransomware attacks, uh, exfiltration of data past a certain amount of upload versus download. Someone downloading four gigabytes an hour, no big deal. Someone uploading four gigabytes an hour, someone's copying your data out before they sell it back to you right uh with a key to unlock it but one of the things i noticed that when you go in there this is the biggest capability i've ever seen introduced into this there are there are now detections for over 400 ai apps oh yeah i, I yeah. did not know that and some of the names i was just going through the names now like i don't even know they do what they do what and now the true inspection of what the AI application is doing is not manifested. It's not, it's not out there. But what it does, it'll give you a good subset. Because think about this. The initial thing that I used to harper on this for years ago that I liked it because it could detect shadow IT. Shadow IT is unsanctioned, you know, technology that may or may not be running your your your, your line of business organization. I don't think we really talked about that. These AI, these AI technologies are shadow IT. They are unsanctioned by the organization because anyone can go buy a Copilot Pro within your organization and think how many organizations really don't have, you know, mobile app management or what Intune does to protect that. And so, so you see, you have it in yours, man. Yours looks so uh, I, was just, I was just bringing mine up, Ron. You beat me. Ah, uh, look at all those. I mean, 419. <laughs> Some of the AI stuff exists in some of the other apps too, but 419 generative AI stuff. That's. Let me make, let me see. Why, where are you? You're in a cloud app catalog, and I was in the cloud, cloud app catalog. Cloud app catalog, yeah. And then just search for AI. And yeah, all the generative AI stuff comes up. But no, I, I, for those who aren't as familiar with Defender for Cloud Apps, we also rank all of those discovered apps on a 10 point scale. 
uh, 10 yeah. being the best. And if you look in here, the best. Of these cool. 400, um, of these 419 AI apps, I mean, we've got one ranked at a one, quite a few ranked at two. And that definitely means they're not secure, right? They don't support um, SOC or FISMA, um, any of those, you know, ISO 27001, right? No FedRAMP, those kinds of things. Um, so very <laughs> insecure. Yeah. And so whatever you did it sparked an idea. So I went back to security.microsoft.com, went into it, and I see it. Because remember, my tenant got enrolled into the Oh, right. The Defender and, stuff. And I don't know why I did it, but when I went to the old one, now I see it. Because even the, well, of course, the Open AI, a API, and Chat GPT are eight and a nine. So here's mm -hmm. something I'm curious about if either of you have any suggestions or recommendations. I think, personally, um, obviously you want to make the ones unsanctioned that are unsafe that you are aware of, but what about all the other ones? I want to know when people are using these things. So I generally just select monitored. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that okay, or is it? Do you do you have to go in and say sanction? I want to know when they use it, no matter what, because that allows me to create reports based on a generative AI utilization. Well, you won't monitor it because if you put sanctioned, you lower the inspection criteria on the back end heuristics of saying I'm not going to look no. at this as closely. You put yeah. monitor it. I like monitor it because if you click on it and then you go to some of the configurations with monitor. You can make it pop up a banner. You are using an unauthorized app, an unsanctioned mm -hmm. app, right? And we're going to allow you to pass through, right? So that's what I like about it. Now, if you put unsanctioned, you're basically saying block it. Okay. Now you can block it with conditions, but it, I find that it doesn't work really well. So monitor allows you to see who is actually doing it. I think if you if you go in and you put sanctioned, you lose a little bit of inspection on it does it change the score then i guess no it doesn't change the score the score is, is, is subjective well you can because override the score but yeah. you can override the score you can submit a request to override the score right uh this is one of the more busy and time consuming things it's i've, I've known the history about this app because uh, a lot of the people who maintain this have to go out and look at these individual things and so i and i don't know the, the work the lift like google bard Google Bard is a 10. Now, who ranked it a 10? I don't know. Maybe it's a 10 because it meets all of the external well, controls. Like we, can't, we can't use it, so I don't, I don't know. You know, uh, I see something called Google Diggler Flow, Dialogue Flow. I mean, we need to get some people with some naming capabilities and marketing. That's, that's horrible. Um, and so what would give something a 10? And then we'll move on to the next thing. So Google Bard is a 10. And as Andrea said, 10 being the best, one means horrible. So let's yeah. see some of the criteria to be a 10. It has an eight in general, say it was found in 1998 and so and so. So the general means that this person or this entity has given the most public domain information about itself. When it was founded, what's the top level domain? Uh, does it have disaster recovery plan? So if you're selling service, it comes up. URL is not being spooked and stuff like that. Somebody sharing their screen. I don't know who's doing that. That's me again. Okay. Right. So, and so if you come down to the security, it has a 10, you know, it has a user audit trail, valid certificate name, requires you to authentication, remember password. I don't know why I remember password would be a condition for a green check mark. Support SAML. Uh, all of these seem to have the hard bleed thing patch. Well, that's probably because the back end is running Linux or something. It's running Linux. What's, what's the one you're looking at? Oh, Diag Flow. Oh, okay. Or dialogue. Actually, I'm looking at I'm looking at Bard. Bard. Oh, you are looking at Bard. Okay. She's a ten. And so okay. as I go through that, okay, so you have eight and ten. My math is not that good. Eight and ten, add them together, you get eighteen divided by two. That's that's not a perfect ten. So I don't know where you're coming from. So you got a compliance. So it's looking at those things like HIPAA, SOC two, SASE sixteen, GLBA, which is you know. Um, Finance related socks, ITAR. If you don't know what ITAR is, that's you're dealing with military grade munitions. You you deal with weapons and weapons technology, uh, COPA, uh, and things along that line. So it has a 10 legal data ownership, GDPR, of course. And so if I take 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 8, that's 
38, I can get a 10. So uh, I, I I think that is it's it's, it's a mm, game. Of, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Gamifying the, the the results, right? So you could literally get a 10 in legal, but a one in everything else, and still get a 10. I don't know. We, but you know, <laughs> we, we 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 always knew that these numbers would do be said best. So that's one of the things that I was excited about seeing. And it sounds like you guys had already seen it. I just haven't had time to really work in it. And I'm like, this is cool. Now, what it needs to do, there are no conditional app connectors for it, meaning I can control the sessions, right? I can I can break a session, I can do these things in it. So when you add it to it, if that API is not exposed where you can do it, it may not work. So scroll down, you won't see them. Hmm. meaning i can't control the session of that now yeah. you can sort of go in manually but i found out with stuff like google google suite g suite google this google that google, those api endpoints so that when the cloud of security the, the casby doesn't know about it it can't broker the session so if you type in bar you, you're just not gonna get anything no yeah so these are the ones that either are frenemies with microsoft or who have supplied that API endpoint condition so oh. that you can do it. Oh, it's there. Is there? Maybe I'm wrong. There you go. So if you start wizard, let's see. Maybe it's not in the list, but it is searchable. It yeah, could be this... something that you, it could be an app you've registered as well, but our good friend here, Louisville Systems Jockey, also explains that you can customize the weight of each category, which will change the overall score for your customization. Thank you, Louisville. And thank you. He's he or she is absolutely correct right so i like that piece the other thing that i saw was um that the for cloud outs and non-hand sassy and posture management so it talks about some of the major players that are using applications that are almost primarily sassy based and they're the big boys alassian they've improved dropbox net documents workplace zendesk so those things are coming in and being considered in it and i haven't really played it in that while and that makes sense um because i remember the old heads would be salesforce mulesoft adp and a few others but now you're seeing that this is expanding out and that has to be with a few things that's supply chain management vulnerability mm, devops yeah. vulnerability whether it be it. yeah yeah so we're looking at those things right now so that if i can break your your crm and your erp that's worse than a whole lot of stuff. If I start messing around with your PO system, I start messing around with your payroll system and doing these things, I could cause you so much headache by saying, well, I'm not going to charge any of your employees' taxes. It's just pay for you. <laughs> I know that's the extreme. A, a real-life touch would be, I can do what someone did to Solar Winds. That would be bad, right? And I, I and I don't see Solar Winds in that list for some reason, but my, my, my so environment... Is it messed up. So the solar winds, the supply chain management, you know, I talked about that at the AI tour, which mm -hmm. it's funny. I talk about at the AI tour, but it's just enable GitHub advanced security and the dependabot actually goes through and looks for the, the, the dependencies and creates mm -hmm. alerts, automatically create alerts in GitHub that can get sent to Sentinel that say, hey, your dependencies are mismatched or um, out of date, or we checked against this national security database and it's you need to update. Yeah, and and, and redundant top level certificates are seen to be coming back popular as attack mechanisms, right? Yeah, because we we the attackers are not attacking the actual security of a signed certificate top level root or whatever it may be. They are spoofing it, person it, and and waiting on the laziness. You've seen this uh, when email pops up. We cannot confirm the legitimacy of the certificate of this service provider. It always happens in hotels, right? You get on the Wi-Fi or something. So that's the thing. Those are the two things. And I think it's just because uh, I haven't really played in, you know, MDA in a while. And I'm like, oh, my God, you can step away. and Because remember, it wasn't getting any attention. I had thought Microsoft was abandoning the product. But I also found out when I was in Houston last year that this is a big player in the SASE thing, the SASE, Secure Access Secure oh, Edge. Yeah. Watch what it does in the next quarter or so. I'm like, oh, that's what's going on. Now, is it going to be something that comp competes against Zscaler ZPA or ZI, uh, CPA and ZIA maybe? I'm not sure. I know ZPA. We'll see. But those are two things I want to talk about, and I'll be quiet.
Oh, one other thing. In the in, in the thing that we talked about last year, uh, I did not realize how important that if you look at old Microsoft things to still say MCAS, how important that this detection is in for business email compromise, mm. uh, AITM, and um, um, session hijacking and, and token theft. It, that's the, one of the things of the detection mechanism that's high up on the list. So when you see the requirements, it says you have to do that. So you can't get automatic attack disruption within XDR unless you have this deployed and configured to a certain level. And by that, I mean Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. So I sort of went down a rabbit hole, fell back in love with it, so it's my favorite yeah. again. <laughs> so should the AITM, should we change that acronym now that AI is a thing? Instead of AI in the middle, it's... Let, let me let just say that I will just say when it comes to initials or acronyms, yeah. my initials are AF and the initials AF are now used in a much, very, very different way. So I think adversary mm, in the middle yeah. can, uh, can uh, if, if I can survive <laughs> my adversary in the middle can survive it, theirs. I happen to love the, the, the initials AF. <laughs> I love them. Anyway. <laughs> We're ready PG show. AF. You know, my 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 initials are solid useless. So, but hey, should 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 we let Brody say hi real quick? Yeah. Hey, Brody. hello, Brody. Hey, everyone. How are you? Well, well, sir. Excellent. I hope I'm coming through okay. It I, sounds I'm really good. It's probably the best ever. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you, you've completed puberty. You've got bass in your voice all of a sudden. What's going yeah. on, Brody? That's what Perfect. happens when you have kids, right? You turn into an adult. I I am I am learning that. Yes, I'm learning that. I'll try to – let's see if I can go on camera for a second. I'm just in a poorly connected right. environment. But you're you're going to show us that you're you. at a customer site and you have a suit on. How about that? Everybody can mm. picture it. Yeah, you know yeah. what? Just just StreamYard itself wants to crash when I go into the camera menu, so we're just gonna leave the camera off today. Yeah, yeah but yeah, um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Good conversation. I didn't know about the. I didn't even think to to list the AI apps in Defender for Cloud apps. That was that was actually a really good idea. I just totally didn't think about that. Um, and the fact there's 400 is is hilarious. Yeah, yeah I, it, it, it totally makes sense. I'm like, oh wow, 419, and and Rod has them all monitored in his. So I need to probably go do. It. <laughs> yes, I did. Can you mass? Yeah. Uh, you, okay. It, it, that was a while. That was a feature request that you couldn't mass select monitor sanction and unsanction because you could inadvertently unsanction all your apps. So I guess I guess that fear of doing yeah. that. Yeah. See, I, I use that to create reports that show actual usage of generative yeah. AI versus just trying to shut it down. Because when you run the executive report, go to settings, come down to executive report, it's actually nice eye candy for the bean counters and the C suite, yeah. right? It's, it's actually pretty good. And imagine when security copilot or copilot for security is available, then there might be something. Copilot. Which one is it? Andrew, which one is it? It is copilot for security. No, I, it is, uh, yeah, just like defender for, <laughs> yeah. defender for endpoint, it's like copilot for security or copilot for GitHub or copilot for. M365. So. Endpoint for defenders. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I get it. That's another AF. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what are we doing now? Andrea, you wanted to talk over. So we talked about that. We did that. Uh, I forget the agenda you had together. What was the next thing we were going to talk about? We were going to talk about award? the new De Gartner uh, Defender Endpoint Protection Report that came out. All right. So what did Gardner have to say? Well, we are once again in the upper right-hand quadrant, um, which, yeah, which if for people who aren't familiar, and I assume everyone here is, but I always feel like we need to um, explain what things are, right? Gartner is a, what do we want to call it, a think tank? That, uh, um, independent, an independent agency. It's a service that businesses pay lots and lots of money to <laughs> or they could just ask me a few questions. I'd let them, I'd tell them what they need to do with their business. Well, that is true. They give all kinds of advice on everything from like top 10 AI trends for 2024, but they also uh, will do some rankings. Um, 
And there are four <laughs> quadrants, uh, leaders, challengers, niche players, and visionaries. Um, we're in the upper right, which is the leaders quadrant, along with CrowdStrike, Trend Micro, Sentinel One, Palo Networks, and Sophos. And this is for the endpoint protection platform, which mm -hmm. most of us would call EDR, right? Endpoint detection and response. Um, we're calling ours XDR, but. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I don't throw a lot into Gartner, uh, Forrester, IDP. I, I realize that the expertise is recognized and, and, and appreciate it. You know, it's, it's, um, if you read the fine print, some of these things are sponsored, some of them not and everything else. And while you read that, it, the problem that Microsoft had early on that they were not scoring as high as some of these other pro products, because they, we had so many products and you didn't know where they straddled. I saw to look at it. Yeah, if you look at Elitist CrowdStrike, and is that because it's more concise and not as broad in an offering as Microsoft? And and that may be it. Um, it no shade on CrowdStrike. They make a great product. I, we had a real long discussion with some peers today, and I'm like, it's a wash. It really is. You put these two heavyweights in a ring, you tell them to fight five times, somebody's going to get three. One time out of five, and next time you go and they take a few months off and fight again, someone's gonna get three. So I get it. The ones that strike me that make me interested is like I like to go understand what Sophos is doing, what Trend Micro is doing, right? Because those don't not really resonate for those who've been of age to be security players. They were they were point solutions. I always thought Sophos was just A V and Trend Micro. I, 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 they got into the, the big boy game when they started putting inspection on a, uh, a car that went into the Cisco ASA. So you can inspect traffic with their product on the Cisco ASA years ago and a few other things. So I like looking at those. It had, did that thing say Bitwarden was on there? Bit Defender. Bit Defender. So, so that shows, a, that shows a couple of things. There's still space to compete, you know. Um, let the big boys fight it out, and you, and you rise from the ruins of all that's going on. And and uh, I'm surprised. I'm trying to bring the mind's eye up. What you sh you said on the screen was Fortinet in there? Fortinet uh, is in the lower left under niche player. Yeah, niche because they they can't decide what they want to do. Palo Alto. I'm surprised they're so low relatively let because in my humble opinion they tend they to me seem to be the more serious contender who could absolutely catch you in a final 30 yard sprint in 100 30 30 meter sprint yeah they get it <clears throat> they really get it i and see checkpoint think, software and i think i'm i think i'm back in the 90s your shirt says you are but anyway uh <laughs> <laughs> Checkpoint, man. Zing. That's my first. That's my first firewall of enterprise firewall. I cut my teeth on it. Yeah, check. It, they've been around for a while, and well, that's that's kind of relevant as well because they're still in the hunt, somewhat. No, no pun intended. And I remember yeah. checkpoint could not be used in the United States because it was a foreign entity. Yeah, that's right. You could that's not right. use it in government entities. It was. A, it's, it's as far as I know, still an Israeli company, right? Well, I will say, Edward, you know, when you were saying you never put a lot of um, weight into the Gartner Magic Quadrant, I came before I was at Microsoft, I came from a financial services company and we were all, all Magic Quadrant. If it was in the upper right hand corner, we were going to buy it. And there are still lots of um, folks out there who yeah. are very interested in it. Um, well, who's their competitor? Was it is it Forrester or somebody else these days? I would say Forrester is probably the closest, but but and I think what Edward is saying, he doesn't pay attention to any of those, right? He no. doesn't care about rankings, um, but there are lots of people out there who do. Oh, they do absolutely, uh, and, and they do. They they have to have something to pivot against to justify and validate the answer. And I don't want to say it in a way that it doesn't. It, it implies they don't have value. I agree, but and and Rob, you should be more 
I don't know who started you on, but back in the day when we had the magazine, when you had to read it, remember they had they they had publications you you bought, and they were expensive. Yeah, yeah big old books. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, they yeah. you know you, you didn't you and I been around when we were still using etch a sketch right to draw out the socks. I re I I read Computer Shopper religiously every week. That big yes, thing. Computer yeah. Shopper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm old. I'm old. And so yeah. we would go in. If you read the fine print, they would tell you who the authors, who the contributors, who who uh, what's the word I'm looking for, who sanctioned this or patron the 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 you know the discovery right. So it's sort of it's sort of funny. I think the other player is IDT, and I could have swore raw if I you know, me doing research on you that you was a contributor to IDT back in the day. I was. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so there you go. And I started looking around and said, okay, I don't know what happened to it, but I, I remember that thing. Yeah. Now it does I, have value to let you know who is trying to stay competitive and stay relevant in the market. Uh, but it's, it's a thing. I get it. I, 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 you you got to put it in there and, and you go you go from it. But uh, I, it they they want to add like their agencies like MITRE and then MITRE.org. They're two different things. People don't know MITRE attack. It's not the same thing as MITRE art. One's for profit, one's not for profit. You do different things. Um, um, and and they come in and they already. I think my reluctance to really buy in a hundred percent is a lot of times. It's a pay subscription. And the people that pay that super ultra premium thing can can request. And I've been on I've, I've been in one of those rooms where someone would the CIO would say, "I want you to give me a comprehensive doing this, blah 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 blah." Because I'm you know, I need to make a decision to do this. And what happens? That leader tips his hand, and the hand tipping goes. I need to know whether to buy CrowdStrike or not. You basically see here and and, and took that the, the actual create equation and said. Should I buy CrowdStrike or not? So you make you sort of imply that I want to buy it, but I need you to dissuade me from buying it or confirm <laughs> that I do want to buy it, right? So that's my thing with it. Um, but a lot of the writers in there I respect. I happen to know a, a couple of them. I met them. They do do their research. It's, it's all right. So I, I don't want to buy it from Gardner for taking our show. Uh, so there's Gardner, Forrester, um, decisions on Microsoft, right? You're familiar with those? I still do that? They still, they, still, uh, they still around. I don't think they're still around. They are. My good buddy Mary Jo Foley works for them. Mary Jo, yeah. shout out Mary Jo, get her on. She's not at. Uh, I didn't realize she left the magazine or the. Oh yeah, she's, she's wherever been, she was. Yep, she's been gone there for from there for a while. Well, I ain't talked to Mary Jo in gazillion years. <laughs> I bet I forgot what I met her. At. She's funny. I will say <laughs> that. I mean, I think one of the the values that people see in any of these, right, is, you know, no one ever got fired for picking something that was in the upper right hand quadrant, right? That's a good point. That's a very good point. Let's talk about subjective like rankings and, and, and validation. I think we're going to talk about uh, certifications. So um, at the urging of one of the originators of this podcast, Frank Grimberg, he said, hey, Ed, if you really want to sit here and, and test your skills and apply your trade and really put yourself in a good position to understand what true endpoint forensic thought is, you need to take the SANS course 508 for uh, certified uh, endpoint forensic analyst, uh, GFCFA. Yeah, it is the 508 exam, SEC 508 or either FOR 508, one or two, I can't remember. I should, I got the books over there. And um, the, the normal language for the course is called Hunt Evil. And I think Andrea and you and I talked about this years ago. And the, the posters are pretty cool. When I tell you that course is hard, I blow through certifications. Like I drink beer. Two swallows, I'm done. It's hard. And, 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 and I am having to unlearn a lot of bad things about how I've gone about my business. Um, is that a good thing? Yes. Because now it makes you be very agnostic and autonomous to how you go about responding. You, it, it makes it so you should be able to respond to a forensics request, whether they're running MDE, CS, Sentinel-1, Carbon Black, whatever it is, 
there's a set set of processes. And I will be very humble on the show to say, you think you know it, but you don't. If you don't do it every day, you don't. And, and, and the muscle memory is not there. I was overwhelmed at first, but now I get it. Once you get the VMs up and you start playing around, you now I can <laughs> leverage some of the stuff. What what Andrew say almost sounds dirty. <laughs> Look what Brody said. Oh my god. Really I, I, I can't somebody put us full screen. Oh, I put full screen. I'm not putting it in on the screen. No, this is a this is a family show. Uh oh anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and so oh um, my god. but you're right. Mm-hmm. Rick obscurity. Um, Rick. Uh, I recommend anybody that wants to have an external validation of their skill set outside the primary tool and resource that they do. And, and I got my thing about SANS too. That stuff is super expensive. There's I, I can't understand the return on value. I'm not gonna lie, this course is eight thousand dollars, including the exam. So I am I have a I'm incentivized to make sure I don't I don't mess this up. And plus Frank is watching me. Yeah. Yeah. He call he is my accountability partner. He, is he gonna he pay for it me. if you pass it the first time? He'll buy me lunch. <laughs> and then not show up. And not show up. You gotta be a you gotta be a, a listener of the show to understand the joke. <laughs> uh he calls me every day. Have you studied? Have you done this? Yeah. Time. So I really have gone through and, and go and I'm like, yeah. Um is it is it worth that? I gotta be careful with this. If you sit in person, I know for a fact it is. I've sat one in person. They had an empty seat. The guy let me sit in in DC because I happened to be in the same hotel. He said, You can't officially take the course. I'll put you on a team. That's how I got introduced to Net Wars. This, this was a while back. Yes, the people that are super knowledgeable. I'm doing the on demand course, I'm doing it at my pace and leisure. Uh, you gotta be serious about it. Or um, And plus, the, the passing score is public knowledge, so I'm not about to disqualify myself. I think passing is 70%. Frank wants me to score a, a 90. You can score a 90 because then you get this special designation. For those who've taken it, they know. So I'm really trying to do that. That's my professional goals. I think we talked about the show. But let's go back to certifications. I think certifications now are going to have to take a huge relook at themselves because – you know, now you're having to find who are the experts to be able to write certifications for AI, right? And how do you do it? Because AI to me seems super developer centric. It's developer centric. Plus, it's all most of it's all open source, and I don't know if there's going to be any organization that puts any effort behind it anytime soon for a centralized general. <laughs> I wonder, I'm sorry to interrupt, Ron. I just wonder, since we're already getting close to time, it'd probably be great for us to devote a whole show to the different kinds of certifications. Like, Edward, you gave a brief update of what a SANS course is like, but we can talk about SANS. We can talk about the Microsoft certifications. We could talk about what's the uh, CISSP, if anybody has one of those, or if we can have a guest come on and talk about that certification. What do certifications do we need? Do we need certifications? So I, that might be a fun thing for us to just spend some time uh, on. I think that's an excellent idea. I think we sort of as a, in terms, talk about it and just yeah. sort of split I, away. I think we need to because I, I I will I we had uh as uh ASIF early in the you know evolution of this show, yeah, helping prepare for the SE two hundred and a few others. Frank obviously uh does work what you know content and and, and 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 test creation i think we should really have a show about it to, to ask it a couple of ways and it, it probably needs to two, be a two-part show one show is how you prepare stuff like that study methods other ones would be do you think it's worth it how can you get return on value uh rod myself and andrea are old enough to know that back in the day if you had MCSC behind your name, yep. you were the thing, yep. period. I came up that route a little bit later. I started on it, and then I veered off with the networking route. And my goal was CCIE. 
So CCNA, CCNP, and all that. So I went that route and it came back to the Microsoft Break. And if you had a CCIE <clears> back <throat> in the day, you know, you walk on water. Well, I'm, I'm from even prior to that. It was C and E when I was when I started out. Yeah. I had I had my C and E uh, certified Novell engineer for yeah. three dot one and four, yeah, and that, and even then that carried away. And then you started seeing obscure certifications like uh, IBM Warp. I did. That I think one. we should save this for the certification. All uh, right, let's save it for the certification. All right, yeah, and, we're and, and, and I have a lot of visual cues. I've saved every certificate for every certification I ever got. Stack. So let's go. Hey, All right. We do have one before we go. We do have one, I think, landmine audience question. If anybody wants to supply this one. Speaking of the report, we were talking about the Gardner report earlier. Does anyone have any recommendation for an organization that uses CrowdStrike as a primary and MDE in passive? Andrew yes. is deeper is deeper on me, so she she has seniority. She gets to go. I would say I, I will ask two questions because sometimes people mean I have Defender for Endpoint installed and I'm not having it take an automated action. That's what they mean when they say passive. And sometimes they mean I have Defender AV in passive mode. And those are two different things. Um, certainly, if we're talking about the Defender for Endpoint part of it, uh, you know, you might have to do some whitelisting on both sides um, to make sure that no one's interfering with each other. But I would definitely, if you're, um, I would have tamper protection turned on inside MDE so that if, if for some reason CrowdStrike doesn't catch something, we have the ability to swoop in behind and catch it. Um, and honestly, having MDE in, we'll call it that with automation turned off, still gives us the ability to use threat analytics. You can still use web content filtering to block things like pornography, things like that, right? You can still um, take advantage of the vulnerability management. So all of those additional features that you get from having Defend for Endpoint um, without automation make it super sweet. Yeah. Uh, I'm of the same opinion as Andrew, and I recently had to encounter this with a customer. Uh, this customer, and Andrew is the uh, wordsmith and certified author on, in the group. Uh, what's the term for having more than one partner in the marriage? Polygamy? Polygamy, whatever that is. Okay. I'm starting to see that in IT, where people are running dual solutions, dual providers and all that. Uh, I sort of talked about it a couple of years ago where I called the TBV, uh, Trust But Verify situations, and, and now people are getting better at budget. So let's go back to what the question is. I've seen it in action. I asked the customer why. And they said, we want CrowdStrike as our primary EDR. And he said an odd thing. We still want Defender AV because it does a better job. And I'm like, really? Yes. And, they, and, and and so when the customer said that, I said, well, give me a little context. The context was they've always done it that way. Prior to that, they were running a EDR solution by um, the company Googlebot um, Mandarin. And then they were MDE, and then got rid of that, made MDE primary, and then CrowdStrike. To cross right this so they were trying to solve a problem and i think what he was trying to get to is the cross right solution is not embedded into the os it's not into the genetics of it and they like the way it handled it better than that but they liked it so i think you're starting to see that thing where you're starting to see that uh and i wanted to come in on what andrea said people really gravitate toward what's in that upper right corner and they live by it and what that did was it coined the term uh best of breed mm. <laughs> so everybody started going to best of breed right and so you're starting to see now uh one thing that i started liking to say when i was doing my sentinel days best of use case what is the best use case for you mr customer that's the thing you need to really look about so my opinion is what is best for your security initiative and operation that will not burn out your people. You do not want to bounce between that. I don't think there'll ever be that synergy between the, the competitors to, to make it easy for either one. 
So that's where partners and innovators come in and say, I'll make the single pane of glass for you because they're never going to get along, right, and do that. Um, you also wonder um, why, you know, you would implement two when they do very something very similar. Um, obviously, maybe it's a contract thing, right? It's a because there's obviously some value, some value that someone's seen somewhere, but there's also the cost of maintaining so two say, separate things. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of times, so people get MBE as part of an E5 purchase. Ah, uh, gotcha, right? So they are, they have it for for free, so they mm. might as well implement yeah. it. And the number two, that could be number one at any time. Merges and acquisitions, we inherit it. Right. We, we inherit it. We cannot get rid of it. We got we, we just got to use this. And so they the, the customer gets very innovative on how to mitigate or work between both of them without burning out their people. Because you're going to have people who are going to say, hey, this is and, and move between either one of them. That is not a light lift endeavor. It yeah. just isn't. Right. Well, well, I think even just past EDR, as to Andrea's point, we got we need organizations to reduce the amount of tooling and have better integration between smaller sets instead of a sprawl of tools, which is hard to manage and not fully utilized. Not only is it a money waster, it's a resource waster and tons of technical debt. And you and I, you know, bro, is super agree on this. We're talking about that type of situation creates another security risk, which is called attrition. People get fed up and they leave. You you want me to know all these tools? I'm burned. And then even if it's not an nutritional single individual, you got so many teams, you can't pay all these people. Right? It's if you are really good, you're going to get paid well. You cannot, it's it's expensive to pay that. And then the risk is how do you keep Andrea happy? How do you keep Brody happy? How do you keep Ed happy? This and that. And you saw the the rush to pay these outlandish salaries and all this other stuff. And, and so what happens is you lose a single linchpin individual in your organization and all that tribal knowledge and all that, 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 that stuff, it goes away. That is the, that is the, that is, you, you hear these CISOs talking about what keep them, keep them up at night. What would keep me up at night is someone sends me an email at six o'clock on Friday and saying, Hey, by the way, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> and you're done. And they leave, right? So that's cool. But hey, we've taken some great things out of the show. We're at time. We are going to have a two-part series about certifications. We're going to talk about path, study, preparation, and desire. And then we're going to talk about a subjective topic. Is it worth it? And how do you measure worth? Because I don't think corporations are paying for the letters behind your name the way they used to. Remember it went away from college degrees? You had all this and went to this. And now they sort of swinging. And now you sort of. And you thought, and then I'm I'm losing the, the effect because nobody's really watching me really yet. People do it, but I'm paper going side to side. Yeah, paper, paper and CFC. It's a column, paper yeah. tigers. Yeah, right. So, but anyway, everyone, um, I forget who the guest is next week. I guess I should know, but I don't. Uh, but we will. Uh, we and will we put together. To have a guest next it's, week. I know you guys are tired of us. <laughs> yeah, we will put together a two part Correct. series on the show around certification. The want, the need, the value, and the who. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, Parav is next week, by the way, with his deciphering UAL stuff. Oh, yeah, Parav. Big shot, Parav. And I'm going to sit down here and take that term for having more than one person in your marriage, polygorism or whatever it is. Uh, and I'm going to go, is this the new trend that organizations are using multiple products? So to the gentleman that raised that question, you give me an idea to go and come up with the show topic. Elazar? You're right. People are blending technologies now, but they're trying to see, and it's not necessarily the best of breed. They're 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 going with a trust but verify po posture. I believe you, but I don't believe you. I don't believe you. So we'll see. All right, it's six or seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd like to say goodbye. Thanks to all our listeners, our viewers, our supporters. Uh, we're gonna have a great 2024. We're gonna get some of these shows. Uh, for those who want to come on the show and talk about their certification experience. Brody is our discard manager. So pop some on that and then just send us an email and we'll get you on the show. We love to hear your, your, your certification experience and your experience about trying to apply that certification to make your, you know, your condition or your, your, your station in life better. All right. We'll see. Thanks everybody for the show. All right. Thank you everyone. Take care. Next week. <laughs>